Here is a demonstration on how to bring data to Power BI from an Excel workbook. Yet, an Excel workbook that would have the data split over several spreadsheets. Here, there's a spreadsheet that I might not care about, and then starts a few spreadsheets about, for example, different projects, different locations, different periods of time. Here I have Office 1, 2, 3, 4. For all of them, the report has the same structure. So we're going to close that Excel workbook, and I'll show you how to bring that to Power BI and with Power Query, make it a single data table, because that's how it's going to be optimized to be used in visuals. I'll get started with the Get Data. Under Get Data, I picked Excel Workbook. Then I browse to find the file I'm interested in. I click Select the file and open. Power BI connects to that file, showing me the content of the file. In the preview screen, I will see all available spreadsheets from that document. Here I'll explore a scenario where maybe for future updates, eventually there could be more spreadsheets that becomes available and that should be combined. So to get started with importing, I'll just check mark whatever, whichever spreadsheet, uh, just a single one. And then I'll click transform data. This will load a single spreadsheet from the Excel workbook and then provide me with transformation options in Power Query. The first action is to go to the right hand side, apply steps, removing all steps aside from the initial source step. So deleting all the apply steps except the first one. So you'll be left simply with one instruction connecting to your file, which then lists all available spreadsheets. If your file may contain spreadsheets that should not be combined, you will first create a filter rule. So I'll go to that name column, the gray square in the top right corner, and I will create a rule. I always favor to do rules, creating logical rules with logical operators. So here I'll create a rule as this spreadsheet, as, as this document has a sheet legend. So this will be consistent in my Excel workbook for that sheet to exist, yet I don't want it to be combined with the others. So I say, okay, and now I'm left with only the sheets to be combined. If the sheets name are providing useful information for your final data table, then you should keep the column name and the column of data, which contains the condensed data. To do that, let's go to the top menu, choose column. In the pop-up for choose column, you keep check marks only for the columns that you wanna keep. So the first two, name and data. Now, I'll go to the data column header and there's the, that icon with double arrows, click. And it's just gonna prompt to explode, expand everything, you say, okay. And here it is, every Excel spreadsheet, one beneath the other. So going down, eventually you'll see, it is the spreadsheet of Office 2 that begins, and so on, Office 3, and all in all. This demonstration of steps implies that every spreadsheet has the same column structure. As you can see, now all columns have been aligned just in the original order coming from Excel. Now, you're going to go in a column that should be mandatory field. For example, let's say my third column of data, where I have dates, there cannot be any empty values in there. 
So applying a filter on that column, going to the column header gray square of a drop down arrow, and then I'll just say remove empties. Therefore, it cleanses any header titles you had on spreadsheets or any rows of data that would have not been relevant, keeping only rows where you have column headers or meaningful rows of data because they would have here, for example, a date. Imagining that date is a mandatory field to be filled up. Very soon we will take the information from row one and upgrade it to become column headers. Before we do so, notice that in the first cell, it is a sheet name rather than a column header. I'm going to show you a workaround if there would be the possibility for that first sheet name to eventually change over time for the next updates of your Power BI reports. So we're going to be creating a column that would have on the first row a meaningful column header like office, and then just listing the proper office number. I'll go to add column, conditional column. It will then create in this table an extra column, and that extra column will be named custom, and we'll give it a rule. We'll say, for example, look, look in my first column of data. See, data column one. Look in that column, and if ever on a row it equals ID, because ID is that column's header, then the output should be office ID. Office ID will become the column header of that first row where I had spreadsheet names. Else, under the else, you'll use a drop down to say select a column, and now next to it becomes also a drop down list where I'll choose my spreadsheet name column. So what's the result of all that? A new column where the first cell will show office ID, which is a meaningful potential column header for all the data that has listed. The office one, eventually becoming office two, and so on. So now that we have a usable first row, we're gonna make that become our column headers. Going back to home menu, finding the button, use first row as headers. As you click that button, it always populates the change type step. Potentially, there's still lots of cleanup to do to your data, so it would not be wise to do the change type step right away. So I'll take it out with the X. Now is time. You have the whole original data from each sheet aligned one beneath the other. Potentially, that initial data has too many columns, so you could create another choose column in which you keep only check marks for whatever columns IDs are meaningful. So I'm interested in my transactions ID numbers, code, dates, amount, and that office ID. Okay. So it has kept only the columns that will be meaningful to my analysis. Never forget to, oh, clean the data. Notice here we have column headers, all the data from the first spreadsheets, and oops, still the headers from every sheet will be in there. So creating another filter rule to take those out. Well, you choose whatever column. I'll do it on a column currently named ID. So I'll create the filter rule that on every row of data, it should not equal the column header. So it does not equal ID because ID is the current column header name. And now if I scroll down, you'll see that we only have data, no duplication of column headers. So this is a usable data table. Never forget to set the data types. So I'll select all columns. And then under transform, I can ask detect data types. After you use this automated feature, 
it's always good to validate if you agree with the data types that have been set. Potentially, you might replace some data types for another preferred data type. What would be the output? Well, most likely, before you get out of Power Query, you might rename the whole query, give it a, a meaningful name for the output table. And then I'll get out with close and apply on the home. So I'll show you what is the output of that hard work. Having put that in place, originally we remember it was multiple sheets. And now I'll be able to present comparing those results in single visual because I've combined in a single table all complementary data. So if this was spreadsheets for different projects, different office, different months, you need to make it a single table for it to be then usable. It's going to be loading. There you go. <laughs> Power BI always playing tricks on you. No clue why this was so long. Okay, my data table will show up on my data pane on the right hand side. I'll start creating a visual. So I'll collapse and zoom in. There you go. Pick the matrix and then I'm going to choose different columns like amounts, dates, office ID. As soon as you use a date column, there's a whole yard of hierarchy. I'll just keep the months. And there you are, building a visual to show organized by months, organized by my four office IDs, which were initially spreadsheets. Show me how much they've been spending. Uh, there you go. What would be fantastic about that? Well, let me show you. What if um, showing in Excel? What if eventually Office 5 is added to the Excel spreadsheet that serves as our data source? So, opening up in Excel the original data source, and what if Office 5 got created? Well, I'll just duplicate that one. So Copy a sheet and I'll just rename it Office 5. Clearly, numbers will then be identical as the Office 4 value because I just copy paste. So let's close that Excel file and let's see how Power BI will handle this. So time flies. We're later in the future. The original Excel file has new data. And when I hit refresh, Power Query connects to that Excel spreadsheet, refreshes the whole combined table, and then every visual updates. There you go. Adding Office 5 without needing me to do any more programming. Hope that helps.